Okay. All right, guys. There's my mic. All right. So, a lot, guys, the more I've been looking at charts, the more I realize that everything is financialized. So, when I see the clues are, man, when you see Forex currency pairs, when you see racial charts, and then of two instruments, and then after that, you overlay another one that's maybe a, a, attached to it or not attached to it, but then you see that it's the same chart pattern, the same trend. It's not it's not random, guys. So you know something's funneling or changing where the how the price action is going to react. Why why is that chart going up as like and you could spend all year, you could spend all your time researching, okay, why does it have to go up? Why does the Canadian dollar have to go down? How come there's not a milkshake? What's happening? You could try to figure all that stuff out. And even in hindsight, you could realize that look, the price moved up in the, in the direction of your narrative. And then you say, and then after that, you realize, oh, maybe it was something else, right? So I'm going to do this short podcast to showcase all these racial charts that I see them and the charts that look like that if you play one, you're essentially playing all the other ones, right? And it comes down pretty much to either growth or versus value. What I call growth is uh, tech stocks, all that stuff, and value is commodities and whatnots. I might get it wrong, guys, on that description, maybe fundamental guys. Uh, but let's just start at this chart, stare at this chart, guys, for a little while. That's the one that... I've been doing a lot on. So this is the gold to SPX ratio. So essentially, this is like the railway guide to tell you, should I be in real assets or commodities, something that, like people say, it drop on your foot and it hurts, or should I be in stuff that's uh, more like uh, Bitcoin growth, uh, huge uh, price earning multiples or whatnot. Here, the 36, I think that's the nine year moving average. Below is distance from the nine year moving average. But before I focus on the exact, the exact, like what's happening here technically, when you see this chart, it, it should ring a lot of bells. I could put it here in the, uh, like, you know, guys, what this chart looks like, right? Let's say I overlay the ASA chart. ASA is a pretty cool. I got this from uh, from Shizim there, J Jadixon on, the, on Twitter. It's a precious metals fund that uh, they have gold, silver in there, they have gold miners, silver miners. But what's fun about it is it dates pretty, pretty far away. And look, right away, you could see that chart looks kind of like the gold to SPX ratio. Bam, put them together. So you see as the gold as gold starts outperforming the SPX, right? So you guys know ratios, it's uh, gold could be going down, but going down less than SPX, and that ratio could go up. They could both be going up, but gold goes up faster. But at the end of the day, look, if gold is outperforming SPX, the money, whatever X amount of money is out there in circulation, it's favoring, look at that, it just, it flows eventually into this, this precious metals funds. And I could overlay, I'll overlay also silver. See, it goes up. And when the, the amplitude of the moves, yes, they're different. And that's where we could get your edge where you could, okay, now I know the flows are going to gold versus SPX. Then after that, you could start digging in and uh, and looking at all the other assets. But look at that here. It's no, and this is, we're not looking at the gold chart at all, right? This is not, so people sometimes look at the miners and they say, oh, it's not tracking the gold chart. It's not tracking the gold chart, guys. It's tracking the performance of gold relative to US equities. That's why this chart, the as a chart, is not looking like the gold chart. Because we all know the gold chart is up, 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 and higher, right? But look at that. It's tracking exactly the ratio. Lower high, lower high here. This is pretty, uh, quite a performance in the, up to 2009, guys, because the ASA the fund actually did a higher high than in the 1980s, where gold was not able to outperform as much SPX as it did in the 1980s. So that was pretty, uh, those are, they're probably the type of moves you want to play. Look, I'll show you another chart. So now let's look at another chart that looks just like, and once you start seeing that pattern of that chart of gold to SPX ratios in the instrument you're looking at, then you'll understand 
new price scale. Yeah, new price scale. Then you'll understand the what's driving all of this, guys. Okay, that's ASA. I'll hide ASA. I'll put silver on log and look at that, guys. And what's kind of tricky with this ratio before 1970s, gold was pegged, right? Remember? So I'm keeping my eye on what how it's financialized, especially since 1968, 1971. That's when really the capital flows have been financialized. Look at that. Silver does not look it's necessarily like the gold chart, right? But it looks a lot like the gold measured in SPX, right? Gold performance versus SPX. Look at that. Ooh, down it goes. And this was quite fun. This was quite interesting. Silver created this divergence, refused to do a lower low back here from 1993 all the way to that bottom, 2001-2003, while the gold to SPX dumped. So that was some good relative strength. So even if there was a melt-up, and this was uh, the, the dot-com bubble melt-up, even if there was a melt-up, whatever was driving up the melt-up was not it was also helping silver stay afloat. Even gold here was doing higher highs, silver afloat. So gold was still going up. Silver was still going up during all this period here, still higher lows. But it's just the U.S. equities were going in bubble mode. And that's what you want to kind of look at of this, the these divergences where the U.S. equities keep going up, but the precious metals refuse to do lower lows, right? And you see it here again, guys. Look at that. Here's the first one. Silver, not really doing a lower low, barely, but look at that. Look at the gold to SPX ratio right here, lower low. So gold was suffering versus SPX. Not that gold was going down, but it wasn't going up as fast. But look at silver, higher lows. You wouldn't have expected that, right? Seeing that gold-silver ratio go down. So you use that as catapults. And look at that. Here's a lower low for gold versus SPX, but not as steep. And look what happened, the price of silver, higher lows. For now, right? That it's not closed. So this is showing you hidden bullish divergence. Super powerful. This is what the setup uh, you had back in this period here is the same type of setup you have here. Even see here, look at that huge, huge catapult, huge underperformance. Gold can't catch up. Lower low for the gold to SPX ratio. And when that turned up, man, nobody believes death of gold. Then it shoots up. But all this to say that when the gold to SPX ratio breaks out, guys, I'm not quite sure where I could put this lines when it goes maybe here, one, two, three, one, two, three, right there, breakout. Here's my bullish, di my bearish divergence, maybe here. Okay, hold on, remove all my drawings, start fresh. Maybe here above the nine year moving average. Here was definitely a wake up in 2002, and then a little sideways move where both instruments could have been going up or sideways or down, but gold less during that period. So right here, pull, flag, pull, beautiful. Right here, here's the next setup, guys. Oh, that's not what I want. Here's the next setup. This on quarter close, reduce noise right here. Wicks above, uh, we're right here, guys. I'm going to zoom in for you guys. Right, right here. I'm going to put on the closes. Right there. So what do we got? We're getting really close, guys, to breaking out, but I'm going to do the technicals of the gold to SPX chart. But what I want to show you that even while it's going down, each of these ticks up, we know exactly what silver did and silver junior miners did late uh, 2015 to 2016. So even if it didn't break out, just a small uptick, create a huge move in the SILJ in, to, in late uh, 2015, early 2016. Even here, this run up to now one, two, three, the third bounce on now, we know that this is the wake up line equivalent to uh, this one here falling from 1980 all the way down here. This create a huge move, right? We know that gold, from 2018, when the Pavel pivot, whatever, repo, then after that went sideways, March Madness. Not March Madness, but that run up all the way before um, that Q1, Q3, for March Gold went up a lot right here, right? 
then March Madness, then then the U.S. equity started outperforming gold, but gold did not go down that much, right? Since those the, those highs at 2000, it's at 1850 now or wherever it is. It's resetting. Each of these moves up, gold is perching higher and higher, and that's the, the hidden bullish divergence. Here, I'll put silver chart again. See here, this is resetting. U.S. equities outperforming silver, but look, silver is not doing a new lower low, right? If it really, really weak, and in a downtrend in the bear market, silver would have been getting dragged like here at the beginning of the 80s era, would have getting dragged more and more and more and more. So that's pretty much how you read it. I'm going to add, there's more charts, guys. I'll put the, let's say JDX, right? JDX, new price scale, uh, hide silver. And you'll see these, these flows, guys. Look at that, JDX. It tracks pretty much the the capital flows as defined that goes down didn't quite do a higher high not a, like low, lower high right here exactly the same way that silver is right silver if i re-show it you see silver lower high right here see lower high the huey uh, i'll put the currency cad usd here's where it comes important Put CAD USD, I'll hide JDX. Ah, Jesus, I didn't want to do that. Why did I do that? Compare CAD USD, new price scale. I'll hide JDX, I'll hide uh, silver. Here, look at that. CAD USD it tracks the ratio of capital flows. Uh, Jesus, pretty, 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 pretty close, guys. So you got. So that's how you spot evidence. And even look, the CAD is doing a higher, it's doing the hidden divergence, right? And you see the CAD chart, it, like I just showed you, it looks just like the JDX chart. Look at that, guys. It's the same one. And even the silver chart, it tracks it pretty much. Amplitudes are different, but the takeaway is on a quarterly defined basis, it's higher lows or higher highs. That's how you remove noise, guys, and you see really what's the more imp important trend in place, right? Uh, what other chart? There's so there's so many guys that track that. I could have put platinum, right? Platinum, P uh, PL, platinum, new price scale. I'll hide the other ones just to clear it up a little bit. Look at that. Look at the platinum chart. Holy Moses! Logarithmically, again, doesn't track to perfection, but when it goes down, that tends to go down. If it refuses to go down then hidden bullish divergence guys and that's the awesome play because when you have hidden bullish divergence you trust that wedge breakout you trust it even more your equities are not able to outpace anymore or no it's the opposite they're outpacing but now both instruments are going up it's just that one instrument is going up not as fast as the other goes up even here you see some bearish divergence, so platinum not able to do new high while the ratio goes high. So it's the same thing. Whatever happens on the downside in your favor, on the upside, when you want that ratio, parabolic melt up, and then you say, when is it going to turn down? Well, if you can't do a new high on platinum, that's already not a very good sign. But it's, that ratio is going up higher in favor of gold, outperforming SPX. That could give you some clues of uh, some underlining issues, right? Then after that, of course, if there's a more important uh, breakdown, one, two, three, four, five breakdown, then you know you're out. So it's pretty much that simple, guys. All narratives of whatever you want, uh, manipulations, uh, this needs to happen, milkshake theory. It's it, Guys, when you look at that chart, that's the chart that drives everything, everything. So... Just a split. Am I going in tech stocks or am I going in commodities? J just look at that chart, guys. But you have to understand that each of these rallies is creates insane power. So the true bull run where you will buy all the dips like, like a madman in the commodities and precious metals is once you're above here. So 2002, uh, even here after here, you, once that ratio really starts turning back upwards, that's when you really, really are on the good track that the 
corrections will be shallower, less long, that the capital flows will keep going up. So you got to really look right now here at this breakout line. If you get a quarterly close above this line, man, that, that'd be awesome this quarter. I don't you see it's reacting, so I don't know where it's going to go. But pretty much that's the way I see it, guys. Uh, even uh, what I put, I put, uh, I'll put the CAD GPD, another currency chart where I realized plus CAD GPD, new price scale. That's another chart that tracks that ratio. See, it's refusing to do a low low, and but every time that goes up, it goes up strong with it. And good, look, the cat, the cat GPD guys, it's it's breaking out, man. So that's another super bullish. Like I, I in Twitter, I just can't cover all the stuff in detail like I'm going to share now. But this is like for our members at North Star Bad Charts, they get access to this, man. This is huge, 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 huge bullishness. Look at that bullish transition zone, huge pattern breaking out. Nobody's talking about this. And we know that this is very supportive of the Canadian dollar continuing to appreciate, which if it it's it's all linked, guys. CAD, if it starts beating, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the CAD USD, if it starts beating USD, if it starts beating um, GPD, if the, the gold to SPX ratio starts turning up, we're like on the verge of the really sustained important move. Which one's another one? Odd, even odd New, New Zealand dollar. I'll pop that one up. And okay, I'll put New Zealand. Hold on, I'll back it up. Guys, what I did is okay, here, I get the plus, put New Zealand odd. I think because I have just more data, and then I'll just flip. Of drawings. Okay, I have a little bit more data. The flip the scale. Remove CAD. Here, I'm gonna flip inverse. So this is essentially the odd versus New Zealand pair. And look at that, guys. Not always, but once in recent time, you see here it had divergence, went up, signaling the divergence with the that this was really blew off top in US equities. After that, started trending upwards, broke out. Same thing here, top two of gold versus US equities, broke down, huge pattern. But look at this, man. I'm going to put the, I'm looking at the quarterly candles because June, guys, is a quarterly candle close. Hello, candles. Look at that. I have not looked at that in a while. Holy Moses. So this is probably a currency pair to go long right now. Especially, look, it's breaking out here. It could be breaking out also above these highs, right? Every time you knock one down. And the final one is this one. Then there's a vacuum all the way up here. And what chart does that look like, guys? It looks like the gold divided by SPX. So what does that mean? That means it's going to also look like, let's say, does it look like the silver junior buyers? Let's try a new one. Yeah, kind of, right? Goes down, silver junior miners can't get up. It's tracking it, so maybe that's leading the silver junior miners, which might look up, guys. And that's another one. Uh, what else could we put there? They're all the same, guys. All these uh, JDX, JDX, they, I'll put the um, XAU, right? Gold, silver index, new price scale. Look how that one tracks. So this one here, I'm going to hide New Zealand dollar. Look at that XAU, track, track, tracks, goes down, base, breaks out. So even while there was just a small rally here for the gold versus SPX and what didn't break down from that, uh, that diagonal trend line break there that I, I had right here, higher lows, guys. So even it reached that's down, that's hidden bullish divergence. So imagine the move once we close above this line here, once the gold to SPX close above this line on quarterly basis, guys. This is just the warm up back. They're, your loss of purchasing power, all, all these real asset companies, these miners or uh, these commodity currencies, call them whatever you want, they are hooked 
to that shift of capital flows, guys. And this hidden bullish divergence across all these charts should get you really, really bullish, guys. And again, these are quarterly charts. So you want profits for the next three, four weeks? This is not it. This is the roadmap to know that the odds are that the dips will get bought. There will be volatility, but overall you're in an area that you're at low risk of going down to zero and high reward. So the reward is not consumed yet, right? The reward is the expansion of price for all these commodity pro currencies, uh, miners, whatever leverage plays, SLV, the, the metals themselves. The upside is still really, really there, guys. Until you see that bill, that bearish divergence that I showed you here with that ratio, uh, you're just not at the top, guys, yet. So that's pretty much what I want to share with you guys. I maybe that might have dragged on a little bit, but um, I, I just had to put this uh, this out there, guys. So hope you enjoy and uh, let me know what you think. Ciao, guys. Do 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 do.